made back white seats, black piping. Remind me of Paul McCartney and Mike fighting. <laughs> you feel that? All right, guys, welcome back for another episode of Maybach Conversations. And today we got a, a great one for you guys. We got my the one and only my man Neo. Uh, appreciate you, my guy. Appreciate you for yeah. being on the show, Thank you man. For having me, bro. Oh, uh, no yeah. problem at all. This is the CEO of Circle of Greatness co-founder of circle of ceos philanthropist yeah. entrepreneur yeah. i mean am, am i missing bro. anything no nah, that's it builder that, you in real estate too though real right? estate too yeah, oh, yeah man yeah. so so not like you i dabble uh, a little bit you know what i mean y'all saw that mansion we just left right <laughs> <laughs> that ain't even the main house yeah, by the way crazy. that mansion can be rented out 100 percent that's not even... modern estates on instagram check it out man buckhead modern estates yeah. that's one of the most gorgeous properties i've been yeah. in i appreciate you inviting yeah, me to the, the same, property bro. to the parties you've had yeah, yeah, and gonna we're gonna start doing... the start the episode off yeah. by popping a bottle to your success yeah let's get it no we got moed and bel-air which one you want to do do moed i don't drink <laughs> but i like how the moed looks so let's go ahead and let's do go moed. rose that's yeah. cool with you yeah, yeah let's course. do it yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. there it is popping bottles to my man success let's get it as always so I know you don't drink, man. You gonna yeah. take a sip today? No, no. <laughs> just, I'll hold it for you. Some some water or something like that. All right. Well, look, yeah. we'll put this one down, and I'll take that one right yes, there. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So, so first of all, let's start with a lot of people drink. Yeah. How come you don't? Like, what yeah, what, what, yeah, what kind of story. discipline you got to yeah. not be able to say I'm I'm not gonna have a drink? Yeah. So for me, bro, it's it's so funny how it happened. I'm talking about 15 years ago. I was probably. 20 or 21 years old and um i went to a party start drinking at the time it's called jungle juice where they basically just you know they mix a whole bunch of stuff up you think it's like juice yeah i'm drinking going crazy <laughs> like i don't feel nothing mm. i walk outside bro i couldn't walk i went to my man house the room started spinning i was trying to like god stop the room it just kept going yeah i threw up i said yo if this would drink and feel like yeah i'm never doing it again and that was 15 it. years ago and you gotta think about it bro you know it's expensive habit when you don't got it mm. you going to the club buying bottles i couldn't afford no bottle you buying somebody a drink i couldn't afford it so right it actually probably saved me i know people spend 10 20 30 000 on yes. drinks a year yes I say that money now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. But you know, in, in the defense of whoever made that jungle juice, yeah. they be putting the cheapest liquor in that, there, bro. That's a fact. In, in their defense, they so, did that so, too. and they be mixing different liquors. Yeah. You especially got brown called jungle liquor, juice. Yeah, brown liquor with clear liquor. <laughs> Man, so you Tennessee never... <laughs> with the cheapest liquor. Yeah, you don't know what so, you get. So you you could be missing out on a, you know a nice little yeah I could cocktail be. that'll make yeah. you feel you know like wine. Yeah, and I think if I was to drink again, it'll be more like casual like champagne i can't yeah. get drunk i don't think drinking champagne no no nah, you, you you can't but i know some people that do all right yeah but it's all yeah. good yeah. so man we're gonna get right into the questions brother yep. all right guys you know how important professional photography and videography is in real estate and i take mine very seriously the only company i trust is visually sold and that's visually sold.com they have the best photographers They've been shooting all of my photography videos for my real estate projects for years. Not only that, they have a next day delivery, instant booking online, and the quality is outstanding. Get your game up today and get 10% off your first photo or video shoot by using my code, which is Trey, T-R-E-Y, at visuallysold.com. And that is, again, Trey at visuallysold.com. They will take care of you. Make sure you tell them that I sent you so I can get some future discounts on all of my stuff in the future. All right, guys, visuallysold.com. Check them out. They will not disappoint. One of the most professional services in the business. All right, I guarantee that. Now let's get back to the show. Let's get it. Let me get this. I want to shout you out, bro, because before I moved to Atlanta, I used to see you, bro, showing the luxury homes. Bro. Yeah. I feel like I look to this day, I show people your page, like, if you're a realtor, like, yeah. this should be your blueprint of what you should do when it comes to creating, like, you should go after the luxury homes yes. versus going after this. Even if you're selling the small ones, yeah. be perceived as, I'm a big dog. Yes. So I literally show them your page and Kiana page. Like, these two are the blueprint. Man, I appreciate that. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, the way I came about it, I always had a plan. Sometimes people... Yeah. They'll get into this business. They don't even have a plan. 100%. So I always, I knew I wanted to sell multi-million dollar properties from the beginning. Yep. But I don't 
I'll take a person that's buying a two or three hundred thousand yep. dollar house yep. because I don't mind. I, for me, it's all about how many people I can help and how many mm -hmm. properties I can sell. One hundred percent. So the volume. I mean, you can sell a two hundred thousand dollar house and make six thousand. Yeah. So I, I'm not pressed. You but said six or sixty. Six. I'm. A, I was say sixty. That sounds crazy. <laughs> nah, what nah. type of? Then my missus said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. So you can sell a two hundred because we are uh, commission is three percent. Yeah. So two hundred bands, six thousand yep. dollars. I'm, where else are you gonna go make six thousand yeah. quick like that? Yep. You know. So yep. anyway, I, I, I help everyone just for the record because I done lost so many deals where people say, "Man, I thought you only sold multi million dollar properties. Yep. I couldn't afford you." One hundred percent. I can see fact, people saying that. The doctor I interviewed yesterday, Natalia, she sold. She she's purchasing a home right now. She said she didn't come to me. And she's in a in, in a in a good price range. She yeah. said she didn't come to me because she didn't think she can afford me. Wow. And, and you know, you it, might gotta do a video letting people know, like, I know. yo, we sell everything. Exactly. Because when I saw you, I'm like, yo, this dude only sell big homes. <laughs> this is where I knew you too. Like, I'm like, Man, yo, a lot if you want to go that. get, but I feel like you carved the market for that. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather sell a million dollar home than a two hundred. I, I I agree, yeah. 100%. I, Let's, it's a blessing. Who buy anyway. more though? The, we'll sell the, more. The, the average price point is going to be the average price point going to be around four or five hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, and you can run them all day, but you know, it's, it's even in my with me though, it's going to be probably around a mil. Yeah. Nine hundred. Yeah. One point two. I I, yeah. I mean I. I'm anywhere from like one to one point five on average. Got it. Perfect. I would say. Yeah. And that's a blessing because you sell a million dollar house, you make thirty racks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. One point five million dollar house, forty five thousand. So Ooh, it's, yeah. you know, I, I like to keep them going, man. Yeah. So I, I need clients like you. One hundred percent. So when you're ready to buy yeah. them, them all the cribs, all the cribs, sell them. Make sure you come see me. Done deal. All right, bet. So, Neo, we we know you're successful. Yeah. Where are you from, and how did you grow up? What was your background? Yeah. So I'm from West Philly. Uh, moved to Atlanta about four years ago. I mean, I grew up in a drug infested neighborhood. Mm. My, my dad been in jail since I was two years old for committing murder. He died there about probably like seven years ago now. Mm. Um, and I'm I sorry literally to hear that, bro. no no problem. Appreciate. It. I literally grew up in a drug infested neighborhood, right? And my mom's idea was I want to give my kid success. Like so, her thing was education. So she sent me to a school where it was only 50 African Americans out of a thousand. Mm. My favorite quote is by Oliver Wendell Holmes. Once your mind is expanded to a new concept or idea, it's hard to go back to its original way of thinking. Mm. My friends driving Benzes to school, like they, they had pools at their house, they had pool houses, like they had <laughs> theaters. So it opened up my mind to believe that I could have more. Right. Now granted, I didn't do good in high school. I got kicked out of high school. Get out of here. Yep. Ended up going to college, got kicked out of college. Wait, wait, hold on. You yeah. got kicked out of high school. Yep. And you were still able to go to college? Yeah, because I got I went to this Catholic school, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade, got kicked out. I went to a new high school for 12th. Okay. Did good that year, and then I went to college uh, the next. But I got kicked out of college, too. <laughs> Yo, what did you do to get kicked out? I was hanging around the wrong people. One of my, he's actually a friend of mine, but, like, he did something wrong. And because they always saw us hang, hanging out together, they guilty pretty much by guilty by association. Plus, my GPA was a 1.95. So you had to have a 2.0 to be able to stay anyway. So when they saw that I was hanging out with them, they said, let's just get rid of them. Because yeah. by by the rules, 1.95, you're out, mm. period, anyway. Mm. So that got me out of there. So kicked out of high school. Yep, kicked out of college. Kicked out of college. Fired from 10 jobs. Fired from 10. Man, y'all yeah. hear this story, man. Yeah. I mean, damn. Yeah. And my last job was, it was just, it was really the turning point for me. It goes back to my favorite quote. I was working at a private airport every single day. I was the poop boy. I would go on these private jets and I'm taking the mess off the planes. I'm vacuuming the planes. I'm driving people to the plane. Like I've been on Oprah plane. I've been on uh, Donald Trump's plane. I've been mm. on Cowboy owner plane. I've been on all these billionaire planes um, and it made me believe that I could have more for my life mm. and once I got fired in that very moment I said bro I can't if I keep going down this path I ain't going out to anything mm. so I changed my life over about 15 years ago I've been a full-time entrepreneur I haven't had a job 15 years mm. this is all I know mm. going out here and making it happen I yes became, sir 
mentally unemployable at that time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, that's amazing. But that was good for your subconscious to see 100%. those jets and seeing that people what? own that. It did so, everything for me. And that made that you want to have yeah. maybe attain that one day yeah, yourself. I got on, uh, I, I, at the time I said, I'm going to own a jet, I'm going to own a jet. I'm gonna, but I was going to say, at the time, I was like, I just want to fly one. Mm. And I tell people this all the time, Trey, you got to hold on to your vision. Like mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to fly a jet. Year one, it didn't happen. Year two, it didn't happen. Year three, it didn't happen. Most people would have already quit and gave up. Exactly. Year five, it didn't happen. Year nine, my mentor called me and said, hey, um, we're about to fly out. Come meet me at the office. Mm. I came to the office. He let me drive his, her, his, his, what is that? Uh, Bentley, but it's the most sane, mm. to the airport where they fired me. I drove it to the jet, got on the jet, we took off. But I held on what? to the vision and knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Now I've been on a hundred plus jets. Man, wow. Yeah. You know, I only I never even flew a jet before, bro. Wow. I, that's I, crazy. I've been on I just been on it. I've been on a couple of them yeah. to, to advertise selling them yeah. and helping booking them out. Yeah. But I, I never oh, you flew gotta a do jet. That. Yeah, yeah, you gotta do that. But I don't know, I'm a little tight when it comes to flying because it'd be I mean, I, I know how to be I'm smart with my money. One hundred percent. But you need to be. But you know, you gotta have a team flying with you because there's one person flying by yourself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not cost economic. Yeah, exactly. What we used to do a lot of times was we we would bust it down. Like for example, we did Miami Circle of CEOs yeah. at the time. We we went to Miami. I don't know if we it might have was a round trip. I think we came in. It was like twenty five k. Mm. We bust that up between like six of us. So okay, it ain't as bad. Yeah. Versus. I've done a lot of jets with just my wife and my family. Yeah. It's on me. <laughs> Dub, 15, 30. Most oh. I ever paid was here to Puerto Rico for like an 80 piece. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was, it was. That, that is crazy. Yeah, that bro. is crazy. It was round trip though, but it was 80 bands, bro. Like it, That's a blessing to be able to do that though, man. Yeah, that, that's was. huge. Yeah. That's huge. But I ain't doing it like, I ain't, I'm, I'm, I ain't doing it like that no more. So, I mean, so, I ain't spending that type of money just yeah, us. Yeah, so now you just own your own jet and rent it out. You could do Kinda that like too. Kind like M500, yeah. right? But I, I'm on first class on Delta. You I, know what I'm saying? I feel you. Yeah, I hey, can live Bro, with I ain't going to lie to you. I be uh, I use the Frontier Pass. Yeah. They yeah. got like a uh, five or $600 pass. Yeah. You pay for it and you fly free for the whole year. That's crazy. You know, because yeah. what I heard about with that. Delta is going to be what? True. First yeah. class flight. Right, like six, seven hundred. bread with Delta, though. Right, so I, I, I spend that. like 75000 That's what I'm saying. You know, and and... I want to be able to do stuff like I can, but yeah. for me, it's like I'm going to get from point A to point B either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got to step my game up. I ain't going to lie to you. I got to step my game up. That's inspiration. I appreciate it. Yeah. So you grew up in West Philly. Yep. You, so you didn't come from, did you come from a struggling background or, or some money? I, I don't want to say struggling, bro, because my mom made sure everything was right, but I didn't have my dad. I had a stepdad that... I don't feel like I got much out of me mm. having my stepdad. So I don't want to say I wasn't, oh, I grew up poor. I never missed a meal. Mm. House always heated. Mm. So I, it was never on that. Gotcha. But I didn't, we didn't have, we wasn't balling. Mm. You know what I mean? We wasn't bodies, so bodies. Like middle class then. Yeah, yeah, middle class, lower middle class. Got it, got it. Okay, so on this journey, first, let, let, I'm gonna, before I even get to these questions. Yeah. Congrats on what you just did in Africa. That that was that, bro. a major, thank, thank bro. So, so that, that's bro. actually on my vision board for yep. me to go to Africa, yep. sponsor a few tribes, yep. and go give out money, uh, gotcha. I'm gonna get clothes. You set up. Yeah, yeah. I, I need that. Uh, how how was that feeling? Was that bro, has that been was, on your goal to do list for a while? Man, my mom been wanting me to do a well, bro, for 15, 20 years. Mm. Son, we gotta do a well in Africa. We gotta do a well in Africa. We gotta do a well in Africa. And I finally done it, bro. And it was just. It was just such an amazing feeling. I we know even went was. in the hospital, bro. Paid everybody bills I in saw the that. hospital. You, it was you and Jessica, yeah, right? Me and Jessica yeah, Jessica. Like, yeah, that was that was dope. Yeah. So it just felt good to be a difference maker. Yeah. yeah. And I seen they they won't let people get out of the hospital unless they pay. Unless they pay, bro. They yeah, keep you'll be able to keep you there. Yeah. And you keep racking up the bill, keep, keep getting higher. Bill. Yep, one hundred percent. That's until you crazy. Can get out of there. Yeah. That is crazy. So we wanted to just really go be a change. That's a blessing. Yeah. You're going to reap so many blessings from that. Appreciate and that, I'm pretty bro. sure you're already seeing them, man. Yep. So that that's something that I want to feel and I want to enjoy. What country did you, what part? No, I was I'm going to use in Africa. I was but in what? Ghana, Ghana. And I went to Nigeria, but all the work we did was in Ghana. Got it. Yep. That's lit. <clears throat> so when you make it, make sure you go give back to your people in Africa, baby. Yep, 100%. All right. So on this journey, what were some of your setbacks? I know you've been an entrepreneur for yeah. 15 years, been successful. Mm -hmm. What was some of your setbacks in, in becoming who you are today? 
Yeah, so, I mean, bro, it's so funny when you... My biggest setbacks probably was getting kicked out of high school and getting kicked out of college. So, mm. for me, I've been a full-time entrepreneur the last 15 years. I've I worked so much on my mentality. You were talking about the subconscious mind. My favorite book is one of them is by Joseph Murray is the power mm, of the subconscious, subconscious mind. mind. Yeah, you know that's I mean? one of mine. That's yeah, you know I, I, mean? I keep that on go. Yes, see? sir. So I say all that to say that I I stop acknowledging the things that I go through with setbacks and I look at them as being a part of the process. Exactly. I became mentally unemployable 15 years ago. Like I've been broke so many years. I've negative bank accounts so long having business. Yeah. Don't, but I always knew it's a part of the process, so I've never really looked at it as a setback. I gotcha. just look at it as it's a part of the journey. Exactly. So I can't pinpoint, well, this happened, this happened. I owe taxes to the IRS. Mm -hmm. uh, I failed multiple businesses. Uh, like, it's just, I don't acknowledge, no, it's just, it's been a part of it. So when you ask, it's like, I can't pinpoint, yo, this happened bad. Because it's like you, a you blend don't, don't of no ups attention. and downs. I just look at it as, is it's a part it's, of it's, the it's game. life and, yeah. it, and it's two reasons to explain that too one is the law of rhythm you yep. know if you're familiar with the laws of the universe the law of rhythm is everyone have ups and downs yep. and that, that means that everything you, you, you're not always going to be up 100%. and you're not always going to be down 100%. so when you're going through those downs you just got to know you're going to be up again and not yeah. stress yourself out or worry yeah and then also napoleon hill says for every negative thing that happens to you, there's a seed of equivalent benefit. Mm, so that's good. whenever something negative happens to you, some yeah. setback or whatever, look at it as there's a positive that comes out of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's, so it's funny, and this ain't this is still kind of big, but I went to Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum with my guys earn your leisure. And this is like one of the leading places where billionaires go every year to talk about policy talk about ai talk about world changing and we had an opportunity i was super sick troy uh, rashad got me sick mm -hmm. we 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 met robert smith which is the wealthiest african-american in american history mm -hmm. um to this day and i i, I missed my badge like i didn't have my badge because i was so sick so they had an hour meeting with him we went to go walk through and they didn't let me in mm -hmm. So I missed a whole hour meeting. We ended up seeing him the next day, spent one minute with him. He mm. planned the whole entire event mm. in one minute. I was like, yo, what would happen if I spent the full hour? But now that was a setback. But now I got that story that I'm now telling when I'm doing my speeches. So got it, got it's it. just like you're saying it was a you said a seed of equivalent benefit. Equivalent. So my benefit. Now I got a story to tell the rest of my life. Exactly. So and that's awesome, yeah. too, bro. That's major. All right. So so Neil. What motivates you? Yeah. What, what gets you out of bed every yep. morning like, I'm going to get it. Yeah. It's time to make it happen. I, man, the first thing, bro, honestly, is my family. So I retired my wife. Well, she got fired from the same job. So I just call it retirement. It's been five years. I understand. I got four kids. I got a wow. one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three. Well, she just turned four. So I got a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and an 18-year-old. Oh, wow. Um, but wait, man, you only 30. Look yeah, like 36. Not... But when I got married, before I got married, my wife had a daughter already. Okay, gotcha, right? gotcha. You got you. So and we've been together a long time. So um, to say all that to say, those are some of my motivations. My mom, I retired her 10 years ago. Mm. She don't work, right? So I provide for her or provide mm. opportunities. Nice. And then I got a, a employees and then the world. Like if for me being a full-time entrepreneur, I give people hope. Mm. Like if Neil can do it, who came from drug infested neighborhood, kicked out of high school, kicked out of college, fired from 10 jobs, I could do it, right? right exactly. If Neil can make his business work full time, I can make mine work, right? Mm. So m what motivates me is the people that I can't quit because if I quit, I might be letting somebody down. Uh, that's, I might that's be, amazing. I might be, I might, you may don't go pursue you, every, you, me, we are connected to someone else's outcome. Like right. we're connected. Like what we're doing is inspiring and encouraging other people to believe that they can do it. So if I don't get up and go do it, right, they gonna just settle for less. No, I tell people all the time, everything that settles is at the bottom. Wow. So man, you say the world motivates you. Yeah, the world. Yeah, I yeah. feel that. People, that's, I gotta go get it. That's major, bro. Yeah. And I mean, and if you if you're the type of person that believe you only live once. Yeah. Why not go get it? Oh, well, I, mean, I, I believe the, you only live once. Like, I don't believe. know. If you, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I believe it's. Yeah. 
I mean, because we're energy and we're spirit, so we yeah. never die. I don't mm. think, even if we die physically in the physical form, yeah. maybe we go back to our spiritual form. Got it. I heard that when we're alive right now, we're dreaming in our spiritual form. Wow. This is a dream. Wow. So, I'll, you, see, I you know. I never got that deep. Yeah, I, mean, I don't because, know. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. We, we are spiritual beings, and yeah. I know you are yeah, 100%. from your heart. Yep. I mean, someone, and, and not only that, who's how are our heart beatings we're not controlling our heart oh, we, we're not controlling our breathing when we sleep yeah so it's got to be a, a higher power oh, a higher God, force 100 you know yeah. and and i don't think it's just end all be all when we die but that's just my opinion yeah because i just i feel like we're just too i mean powerful. would that be considered heaven or no i guess maybe yeah. you know i don't i don't i don't know because right. you know i i'm the type where i still i only believe and what I can really see, right? Yeah, yeah. With my own eyes, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. or with your third eye, yeah. you know. Because at the end of the day, our lives can be controlled by school, religion, and what your parents taught you, and 100%. and whoever you got around you. If you haven't tried to learn any advice or learn read any books, like we, you know, if you haven't done any of that on your own. You only know what's been taught to you, 100%. and you can be easily led astray. One hundred percent. So, I mean, if I ain't seen it, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if there are really planets out there that exist. You know, 100%. I don't know if it's a flat yeah. Earth or around. I ain't yeah. been out there, yeah. so I don't yeah. know. But yeah. and I don't indulge in those conversations like that because I don't know. 100%. So I can only speak on my facts. Yeah. Anyway, makes sense. Right. <clears throat> but all right. Do you have more? Matter of fact, I see you when I first saw you. Bro, you was uh, on Steve, what, Steve Harvey Steve show? Steve Harvey, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. told him you was going, what, what, what was, what was I, that, though? It's, what? I've been on with him twice. I, I won the Hoodie Awards as the, the last Hoodie Awards they had as the community leader. Okay. So he gave me a $30,000 check mm. for the work that we do in the community. A hoodie leader, so that just showed Yeah, so I, their hoodie, they call it the Neighborhood Awards. Okay, gotcha. But one of their last awards is called the Neighborhood Hero or something. Mm. And it's just somebody who go get back. I lost one year, and then I won the next year. Mm. Um, and at that time, when I said it, I said, you don't know this yet, but you're going to be my mentor. Mm. He's like, I'm going to mentor you right <laughs> now. We still <laughs> never really connected like that. But <laughs> right, right. I ended up seeing them again because I proposed to my fiance, my my wife, who is now my wife, on the Steve Harvey show. Oh, wow. Uh, shout out to my girl, Patrice Washington. She w essentially, when I uh, won the Hoodie Award, she was there. We started building a relationship. And mm. she got this quote or statement. She says, you never know who got the power to bless you. Mm. So I ended up hitting her up like, hey, I'm about to propose to my wife. I'm thinking about doing it on a local Steve, uh, local news station in Philly. Mm. You think you could hit up Steve Harvey in their camp to see it can happen? Mm. Bro, she hit the producers direct. Within three weeks, we on the show proposing mm. to my wife. Wow. It was we got to check that out. You can yeah. see that online. Oh, right? yep, it's on YouTube oh now. man, I got to check that. That's yeah. major. Yeah. And we're actually going to get into some marriage questions in a little bit, okay, too. Cool. All right, so... To get that hoodie award, and because yep. you lost a year p before, what did you do different to win that next year? I think for that, it was about voting, right? So the next year, I think we went a little bit more aggressive on getting our name out there, letting people know we exist. But I, I did the work. Yeah. Like I just, I, I was serving people. Mm -hmm. So I tell people a lot of times, bro, I just got a street named after me, the Nehemiah Davis way. I saw that, congrats right? on that. That's I appreciate amazing. it. Like, you know, we uh, we entrepreneurs, we influencers, you almost could pay for everything. Like yeah. you could pay for, you could pay for a lot of things, right, right? Exactly. Articles, whatever. But I tell people, yo, you can't pay to get, can't pay for a street naming. Right. You can't pay for the hoodie awards. You actually got to do the work. Exactly. So I tell people, I got this concept. It's called serve your way to success. Mm. Like, we need to be thinking about how can we impact other lives, but how can we take burdens off of people? Mm. When we feed the homeless, we taking a burden off of people. Mm. We providing a water well in Africa. We stopping them from having to walk 40 minutes or three, four miles to go get fresh water. Mm. So I'm trying to be a burden bearer for people. I understand. So every month I'm looking for new ways to just be impactful, but I'm not doing it because I'm going to get something in return. It's just in my heart. Yes. But, you know, God, uh, not God, but I hear people say you help others get everything they want, you'll get everything that you want. Mm -hmm. And so, that's true. So that's the what I've been karma. doing for a long Yeah, you And my mom up. forced me earlier on. Like, you got to give back. I started 15 years ago, and we just haven't stopped. That's lit. That make me feel good. Of course, man. It don't cost a lot to do it. I like, think, yeah. go ahead. We started feeding the homeless with $50 a week. My mom said, you making money in your business, son, we got to give back. At the time, bro, I wasn't making no money. Mm -hmm. I was making 
couple hundred hours a week, mm. 30, 40 dollars profit mm. per day on a good day. Mm. But I still was taking that money out, which was my tithes, mm. and I'm giving it back to the homeless. Wow. Yeah. That's major. Yeah. And that's why you're so successful now, bro. Appreciate All it, bro. those blessings just yeah. catch up. Yeah. So if anybody want to mimic what you've done, like yeah. What are some things I know feed the homeless? What's some other things that you've done in the community that other people can do to yeah. help give back? Because so, I'm interested. Yeah. I want to give back more. Feeding the homeless is one. Uh, and I'll start inviting you to stuff that we do out here. Feeding yeah. the homeless is an easy one. Creating programs. So I help create a program called Chess Chat with my mentor, Carl. And it's you just come. And let me I help create a whole bunch of programs, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we house them in these different places. One of them was we used to do a art, a art, a art mentorship every Saturday. Kids could come. We get one teacher to teach, and now they could come learn about art. Mm. We did guitar lessons. We did violin lessons. So think about what are some things as an adult that you wish you had as a kid mm. how can we go provide that for these kids for free you're right like guitar lessons like, yeah that's a dope idea about too, guitars bro. i never even thought about so that. we go do guitar lessons who's going to teach them about entrepreneurship so every week we do a free entrepreneurship class mm. just showing you how to make money mm. so just start thinking about we were feeding the homeless every week for like eight years straight fifty dollars a week it don't cost a lot go yeah. out pull up like for example i just hit homies like yo i need all y'all to give me Right now in your closet, Trey, let me get five pair of old sneakers and a few coats that you I just need. To, I need to give that away. We just go downtown and yeah. let's just go. It costs us nothing to yeah. do that. Those things will sit out, we'll throw them away. Yeah. Like, but now we could go in. It's cold in Atlanta. Exactly. Was, I don't know. It's, you know, it's yeah, not yeah, cold, I, but it, it's up I and know down. You, I know what but you we mean. literally could go do that. It costs us nothing but yeah. our time. Exactly. But we going to. We gonna keep somebody warm. Exactly. So I'm just always thinking of what some things skiing. So every year we take, again, I'm black, you black. So mm -hmm. we, who goes skiing? <laughs> so right. every year we take a hundred kids skiing, fully paid for. Wow. But what that does is now you may believe you could be a part of the X Games, mm. but you got to be exposed to it. You got to be exposed. So my big my thing is exposure. I'm trying to expose people to things as quickly as possible. That's major, bro. I've yeah. never been skiing either. You know what I'm saying? I need to so go. even as an adult, look right. how many things you said you had. It's only two a jet, <laughs> which is it's not normal. Oh, right. But right. even just a skiing, like, yeah. I mean, people haven't been skiing. Exactly. A lot of people. Exactly. So now we exposing people to that. That's major. Yeah. That's major, bro. All right, we're going to get into the next question. Yeah. All right. Do you have a certain code, morals, or standards that you live by? Uh, I mean, my mom told me certain things growing up, man. It was like, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't sneak. Yeah. And I try to live my life by those things that she ingrained in me. But mm -hmm. I'm an integral person. Like... I don't want to get over on you. I don't want to do you wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I was telling somebody, I don't like when people mad at me, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not an argumentative type mm -hmm. of person. Like, I ain't trying to beef with nobody. Right. Like, I, ain't, I ain't on no online beef. You say something about me, I ain't responding. Like, right. It's just, right. That's really what I'm on right 100%. now. 100%. You know what I'm saying? And a so, lot of people can learn from that. Yeah. yeah every, so. every negative life is. 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to 100%. it. 100%. So, you know, some, some BS is always going to be a hater. 100%. It's, it's always going to be some naysayers. You don't pay that stuff no mind. Yeah. Like a wolf don't worry about a sheep, right? 100%. So if you, And I don't be worried. I'll be like, yo, you say what you want. You got it, fam. There you go. Your but, mom ingrained a lot into you, too. Yeah, my mom, bro. And That's she great. had to because I ain't had no father figure. Mm. Well, I had my stepdad, but I, I don't really count that. But, yeah. That's major, bro. All right. What are some of your dreams big dreams that you haven't accomplished yet. I mean, you done done so much. Do you have yeah. anything that you haven't accomplished You know what's yet? so crazy, bro? I talk about this trade. It's so <laughs> important, bro. One of my biggest mistakes, bro, was I, I didn't dream big enough. Rip. What? Uh, Stop and, it. And I'm going to break it down to you because okay. I legit didn't dream big enough because everything that, bro, I, bro, I, I went down a rabbit hole 15 years ago on Think and Grow Rich, mm. The Secret, yes. uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective all People, I, I listened to Who that Moved My Cheese. I ain't did that one. Yeah. The Power of the Subconscious Mind, yes. A Better Way to Live by Og Mandino. Like, I've been down a rabbit hole on personal development, right. like consuming it, mm -hmm. right? And with that being said, like, it just 
train my mind to think away. I was thinking big then. So I was saying I was going to get my Bentley GTC, mm -hmm. blue rag, blue car. I knew that. I was saving the 18 to buy a Bentley, $2 a day, $5 a day. Like, I believed that I could have all of those things then. Mm -hmm. I believe I wrote down I was going to have a mansion. Yep. I wrote down I was going to retire my mom, my wife. I wrote down I was going to fly on a private jet. So the power of the subconscious mind states despite how complex the brain is you got two parts you got your conscious and your subconscious the subconscious has no reasoning ability mm -hmm. it believes what whatever ever. you tell it exactly you say i'm broke i'm poor i can't have it will, it will give you that exactly i'm successful i'm wealthy i'm rich it, it, it will give you so i realized everything i have now i have a, a house a mansion mm -hmm. now i have all of my dream cars mm -hmm. i retired my mom i retired my wife yep i used to write i'm traveling the world i've been to 62 countries wow um i've been on 100 plus plane okay. private planes i mean damn you name it for the most part i've done everything imaginable that i've wanted to do mm. but i realized well I don't have a bunch, and I'll share a few things I want to do now, but I don't have a laundry list of things, and I call it, I call this your living list. Mm. I don't have a long, a laundry list of things anymore. I knock most of them out, but what if instead of me saying I'm going to buy my mansion, I'm going to develop a, 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 a neighborhood of mm. mansions? Mm. I like what that. about instead of saying you're going to buy your dream home? We gonna go buy motor cars of Atlanta, and now we selling them, and we could drive whatever car we want every day. <laughs> right, right. Instead I, I of like it. so, now I'm switching to telling people that's where you need to be. Because mm -hmm. you gonna make the money, you gonna get your dream home. Then what? Mm -hmm. You gonna get your dream car? Then you and I, we can't buy another car. Meaning we can, but for the most part, you you got Lamborghini, Rolls Royce, Maybach. I got highest. Lamborghini. Yeah. Ha, 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 how can I, you go? You're yeah, done. And I ain't going to go spend a million on a car. Me uh, That just don't I'm, make sense to me. I'm not either. You and me both. Not yet anyway. Yeah. No, nah, I don't think I don't <laughs> think they get me on that one. Even if unless, you got a hundred mil. I don't, I don't think unless I just become a, a crazy car collector. Right, exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean, but the Aventador is up there though. That's you know, a three, four, five, five hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was yeah. my most expensive car I bought. And, you yeah. know, and it, I mean, once you have them, it's just like when you had it when you was growing regular. up, you wanted a to some toys, and once you got that toy, you play with it for a little it, while. It wear off, like, bro. So yeah, we talked about the Wraith when you pulled up. I, I drove it three times in the last year and a half. That's crazy. It's just sitting, bro. That's it makes crazy. no. It don't. It don't. No one's driving it. Yeah. Except for when somebody come into town. Here you go. Yeah. You got that a car is, to borrow. That is crazy. But 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 that was my dream car. So what I'm telling people, your dream will become your reality if That's you work true. it. Yes. You believe it, and if you take massive action. Yep. And you got to feel it, desire and feeling it. Yeah. Believing that you already have it. Yeah. Is is, is a big part One of it. One thing I want to do though, this and this is self. This is something for me. This is something I've been wanting to do mm. is, I want to, um, and I, I wrote, I said this on my album. On like a motivational album, I wanna uh, I wanna land at an airport, land in private jet okay. at the airport, maybe on an island. <laughs> when I land already, the helicopter is running like the blades hop off of the jet, <laughs> go walk right on the chopper. Yep. The chopper now takes me out to, to the, the middle of the yacht, to the yacht and, ocean, yeah. and it lands on a freaking on the uh on the, on the yacht. yeah on the helicopter that's all i want and i'm good if wow. i do that that's all i want to do now. i mean but you done been on the helicopter so all you yeah. re is really i just gotta put it together you really have already done it it's just a matter of putting, putting it landing together. on the yacht yeah i mean that's it. from the helicopter Land land on the yacht because you've been on the jets already yep been on the yacht i haven't been on that type of yacht though that got mm, the helipad on i feel it, it. <laughs> I, I, I that's feel a it. different yacht i feel it and you know i'm actually uh looking into buying purchasing a yacht down in miami so that's a yeah, good money right yeah, there 100%. we can talk about that later yeah, you know and, but yeah. that's that's great money 100 i that, rented so many down in miami bro. yeah i know yeah. and see that'd be the yeah. thing everybody come down and they rent them so yep. you gotta own them and you can you, know, you can own a yacht for 500k exactly you know yachts but, planes the cars like it's a whole nother exactly business exactly I like that you said you didn't dream big enough. So always remember, dream huge because you're gonna accomplish your dreams if you work you. towards them. Yeah. I mean, it's, the law of attraction is gonna bring it to you yeah. through the power of your subconscious mind. Yeah. All right, cool. So next, uh, what do you feel? And this is gonna be the last question before we get into the marriage. Yeah. What do you feel is your true purpose in life? I think to help people, man. I think I'm here to. 
it goes back to my name. My my, my name Nehemiah in the Bible. He was a builder, mm. build the Great Wall of Jerusalem, and the things that I'm doing is in alignment with the things that that the Bible said he wow. did, That's and amazing. just me helping people. I get more joy out of helping others than. That's my thing. Like, how can I help you get mm. to where you are looking to mm. get to? So and I think that's my purpose, really. That's major, bro. And you know what's funny? I'm glad you say that because people don't understand. I know people don't rob people and took from people. So when you do a negative action like that, you know you're going to lose five times over. You're going yeah. to lose some kind of way five times over through the law of karma. But when you're doing actions like what Neo said as far as giving back, now you're going to win five times over. 100%. You're going to get blessings out of nowhere. You're going to, like, I know I've gotten a lot of real estate deals. People ask me how I'd be so successful in real estate because I've given back a lot to my family. You know, not as much to the streets like I want it to do, yeah. but I've given a lot to my family. 100%. And when you giving, you getting blessings from everywhere. Let me ask you, though, when you say giving, because I don't give a lot to my family. Mm. So when you, is this just like, Here's a thousand, here's five. You just giving them or like what? You, you know, anytime they've asked, I always a give. Um, I bought my mom a Mercedes. Yeah, I bought well, my, that's different, your mom and that. I bought my grandma a Mercedes. Yeah. I bought my mom a house. Uh, any of, anytime I go to my hometown, I give to my family, just yeah. give money, whatever dollars I have. Not even dollars, you know, it's more than dollars. Yeah, of but course. Just actively, because I come from the projects. I come yeah. from the struggle and mm -hmm. not having a lot not traveling, mm -hmm. not not none of that stuff. And I always wanted better for my not only myself, but for my family as well. Yeah. I always wanted us to live a luxury, a lavish lifestyle. So, but by giving back, that created so many blessings. Yeah. And, and that's, for my family, I just like to be the breadwinner, yeah. the person they can count on, depend yeah. on, to come to. And I only whenever. ask, cause bro, for me, I, I'm almost the opposite. Like I don't, I don't like handouts mm. because I want you to learn how to get it. Mm. Like I'm trying to show you how to fish. Yeah. Now I'll give up my mom. Your mom is a non-negotiable. Like right. I feel like if we they took care of us. Right. We gotta take care of them. Right. Grandma of took care of us. But little cuz, let me show you how to get some paper. That's true. You know I, what I, mean? I, I, I agree with you 100. Because you work so hard, bro. Like, I agree. We work hard. I agree. But then I I, so I, I still I still a give. Yeah. But I I still agree because but you know what the thing to is. To each his own too. Everything every, works. Everybody for. don't want the successful lifestyle either. 100. percent Everybody don't want it. There's yeah. some people be content and com and with cool with being complacent yeah. or average or basic. I never was content with that. Fence. Always wanted. The, everything yeah, you know yeah, so yeah I, I agree with you saying though teaching uh teaching them how to get it so they can get it themselves but that don't even always work they don't yeah. you gotta want it 100%. if you don't want it in your heart it ain't yeah. gonna happen anyway. 100 percent. so <clears throat> all right next man we're gonna get into the married life yeah all right so how long you been you proposed to your wife on the steve harvey show which yep. is major i've been with my wife four years now okay married married yeah. four years yeah. and y'all been together for how long 14 years. 14. Been a wow. Long time, bro. So <laughs> 13, <laughs> almost half your life. Yeah. Dang. That's crazy when you say it like that. Uh, let me ask you. So first, how is the married life? How, 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 what do you? Married life is a job, bro. Mm -hmm. It's not uh just peaches and cream. You got to work. It's like a business. It's like a, you know, well, no, I ain't like a friendship because I cannot talk to you for months. Like, you still my dog. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to be working that marriage every day, like, understanding certain things. Like, for me, I just learned a year and a half ago through therapy what my wife's love language was. I never knew what a love language was. Mm -hmm. So you got care, you got touch, you got gifts. And I bought my wife a Lamborghini truck, mm -hmm. right? She cared nothing about the Lamborghini truck. Wow. Why, though? It's not her love language. Mm. My wife, my my wife, want to be touched all day, mm. hug me, uh, hold me, yeah. tell me affection. sweet things, yeah. affection. We when I bought her a Lamborghini truck, I gave it to her at the stadium at um, what's the crap? I rented that stadium. What's the darn Brave Stadium? I wow. rented out the Brave Stadium. Get I gave it to her. And I had up on the wall nine things I love about you on the jumbotron and all on the all throughout the. Major. Oh my God! <laughs> Crying. We get to the car. Like, what are we here for? I'm like, the car in the box. Yeah. Oh, my. she's still looking at the. <laughs> she's still looking at the nine things. Yeah, she ain't she... worrying about that darn car. Oh, wow, that's so crazy. I still have to say, but I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's like, you got to treat it. You really got to treat your marriage. I feel like in your relationship, 
like you do your business like mm. like you like you really want this to work like let me be keep it real like i i can count on one hand how many events or how many books i read on marriage you see i'm i'm naming all these books on the subconscious mm. mind I actually can't name one book for marriage. Mm. That's a problem, really, when I think about mm. that. I've been to five events in my entire life yeah. on relationships in a couple. Mm. Mm. So, and that's me. In my relationship, it ain't it ain't bad. I Meaning, it could be all. It always could be better. Right. But imagine if we put some real energy and effort on it. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're doing great. Yeah, I'm know. doing fair, but uh, you know, I'm always, I'm a, you always trying. I'm improving. always trying. Yeah, I'm exactly. trying to level up in every area. Every area, and that's yeah. that's really all we can do every day anyway, yeah. because nothing ever sits still. Something always growing is always moving. The sky is always moving. Yep. Clouds, flowers growing. So yep. I get what you're saying, and you know, I want to go back to the family part too. Uh, man, you you said the secret, right? You learned yep. the secret. Yep. With all those books. Yeah. And I actually tried to play. This is like 18 years ago, yep. 19 years ago, I actually tried to play the secret for my family on Thanksgiving. Every Thanksgiving, we'll watch a movie. I put the secret in. As soon as that came on, my mom would say, man, what the hell is this? Yeah. Take that out. Nobody yeah. don't want to watch that. Yeah. And But back then, I was trying to mold a mind because so, I, I knew it was true. And I wanted it's everyone else bro. to be experience that because when I seen yeah. it, it was an eye opener. I, yeah. It affirmed everything I always believed in. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, well, I can really go out here and be living life luxurious, you know, and yep. owning shit, but Game they, they didn't care. And those, it's so funny, bro. You say the uh, secret. Another thing about it was, darn it, slipped my mind. But more, I know what you're saying in yeah. terms of people got to want it, bro. They oh, a secret. So for me, bro, I've, you know, how they say you can't, you can't say you're going to get a boy or a girl. Like you don't control that or mm. whatever. People tell you that. Mm. And I, I've been saying for years, I'm going to have triplets. Mm. I'm going to have triplets. I'm going to have triplets. You can't have no triplets. Ah. Mind you, my wife had two miscarriages. So oh. having kids. Sorry to hear that, bro. Child, no, I appreciate it. She probably had more now, probably three, four total. But, mm. you know, you can't have a kid. I mean, you can't have triplets. Bro, now she just turned four, but now I got a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old. They wear the same thing, bro. They're inseparable. I got my triplets. You do. I just didn't get them at one time. Mm. So whatever you are thinking about, the universe, God, yo, I promise you it's going to come true. Yes, sir. Most people are living in, in what they thought about. Mm -hmm. exactly. Your current living conditions is what you thought about years earlier. Yes, it's the sum of your thoughts yeah. and my, your actions. Yeah, my guy Darius Daniels, he's a he's my pastor, a client of mine, and he had changed church. You gotta check it out one day. Um, I do. I need a good church home. Yo, bro, come to change I, I, with me one day. I bro. will, man. That thing lit. I, I want some extra spiritual guidance in my life. Yeah, you come know? come near with me. Yeah. So uh, he has a statement: Whoever has your ear has your future. Mm. So. The secret had your air. Mm -hmm. The secret had my air. Mm -hmm. Subconscious mind book had your air. So, so this is why we're creating more of our world. Mm -hmm. your, your words create worlds. Right. We're living in what we believe and thought about. Yes. Most people don't. They yeah. discount. You don't need no money to dream, Trey. Right. 100%. It don't cost you nothing to go to motor cars right now and just and go start look going around. looking around. Yeah, and I've done that. Me too. You I've know what I'm saying? I've done that. Before, before I had it. What? Couldn't afford nothing yeah. in there. <laughs> what it cost to go to an open house? Exactly. A million dollar open house. You have them all the time. Exactly. 100%. I went to one of your nine million dollar listings. Nine, nine million, yep. yep. What it cost for me to go in that house? Nothing. I went in there and inspired them. Nine million pool on the inside, right. fountain coming from the, <laughs> it didn't cost me nothing to level up my thinking. Exactly. But people have been so conditioned to average and mm. content that they don't know what, it would smack them in the face. You're right, 100%. Back to the marriage. How is, you, you ain't been single in so long, so I don't yeah. know how you're going to answer this question, yeah. but how is the married life compared to the single life? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've, I've been shit, out of the game. Yeah, I, I, I can't even answer. Bro. Right, exactly. So, but, but I, I be seeing how some of my friends move, and I feel as though I like the married life for me because I know my wife was there when I when she made more money than me. So mm. I know a lot of my friends and a lot of people. You don't know if she's with you for some paper. Yes. 
I'm that go, sign I go you made, that, yeah. yeah. I go or, that or, or if she actually cares. Exactly. That's, that's All she really got to do is look up your Instagram or oh, all right, bet. Got one. You know what I mean? You don't even know what, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you got, that's, I'm like, man, my wife, I know she ain't with Yo. me for no paper, no nothing, bro. And that's crazy because I wanted to be successful first before I took someone serious because yep. I didn't want to mm-hmm. go through no struggle with someone. Yep. I didn't want to put a woman through that. But yep. now, I don't know which well, one is actually there for me exactly. or for what I've already yep. attained. You yep. know, so yeah, a good way for me, bro. If I'm single, I'm gonna, like, what, if they ask me for stuff, bro, mm-hmm. I could count on two hands, mm-hmm. fourteen years, how many times my wife asked me for something. Wow, that's can, can I get a bag? Can I get on a trip? 14 years, I could count on two hands mm. how many times she asked me for something and it never been a bag. Bro. She might have asked for a pair of sneakers one time, bro. Wow. Man, what women asking for that off top nowadays, bro. Yeah, no, off top before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was about to take someone out on a date. She told me to, she need a hair done, nails done, and an outfit. Yeah, and, and she wanted you to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Chalk. It's <laughs> over with. Good night. As soon as you talk in that language, it's over with. Come on, baby. It's over with, my boy. <laughs> we, if you can't get yourself together to go out on a date with me, I'm yeah. out, and then I'm about to take care of you on a date. You know why, though? Because they use, you know, people sending the cash yeah. apps, the Zells, yeah. like they already, so they got they got accustomed to it, but exactly. that won't work with me. Yeah, it, it damn sure ain't working with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hell out of here. All right. That's a stack before we even get started. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Who finna do all that? It's right. Like, no, anyway. Yeah. How do you endure the tough times in marriage? Yeah, uh, I mean, they, they, they happen, right? Therapy, the arguments. Therapy. Therapy. Therapy helped me, man. I didn't know nothing about therapy. I did it about a year and a half, two years ago, and I'm like, oh, this works. Because mm. you're able to communicate some things you can't say to her. Now you can just freely say it because you almost got a mediator. Mm. So, I mean, that's what we do. Uh, and I think just getting better with community. I feel like marriage is nothing but over communication mm. you got to get good at becoming a communicator we hold stuff in then you blurt it all out and then so you got to get good at communicating. communication is key yeah art 100%. of communication so communication guys i mean talk about i had justin on here and he said the same thing he said never go to bed mad at each other yeah yeah you know, i gotta work, work on, it i gotta do better with that really sometimes i'll go to bed mad you <laughs> know what I mean? yeah i gotta i gotta do better with that yeah because he said it'll that's a good job 100 percent then yeah. they go and then you don't be I said it, it a couple times, but I didn't do it. You yeah. know what I mean? I gotta yeah. do better with it. It's all good, but at least you know what 100%. you gotta do. And there it is. And that's why I, I feel good, bro. I, I don't want people to look at my relationship because you look at it on the internet, you think this thing perfect. Mm-hmm. No, I got problems like every other couple got problems. Exactly. 100%. You know, but we're working to make, make it better. Be better. Yeah. There you go. That's all you can do. All right, guys. Um, do you feel. Marriage brings you more focus, peace, stability, yeah, success. Yeah, all, all of the above, bro, because I'm so focused. Like, I don't got time to be thinking about other stuff. Yeah. Like, I'm locked so, in, So you bro. don't think you'll be where you are if you if you didn't get married or if you didn't have no, a I girl? No, I think I'll still be where I am. I ain't going <laughs> okay, to okay. hold you. But my wife has played an instrumental role, bro, just holding down my family, holding down our kids, letting me go out here and do what I do. A lot of people, bro. And wives I hear all the time, they question your work ethic. Mm. Like, you work too hard. Like, my wife don't ever tell me that. Mm. I had to come do this interview. Like, yo, I got to go here, here. I'm out. Like, it ain't, like, I, I, tomorrow we got to be in Switzerland. My wife going to hold, she going to hold the fort down. Gotcha. We lose you everything. Going to Switzerland? No, I'm, I'm oh, just saying, oh, okay, if okay. I get a call, <laughs> right. you like, yo, Neil, we got to be in Switzerland tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I learned about going to Switzerland seven days before I did it. Gotcha. And I'll be going for a week. Yeah. I went to Ghana for 10 days before that. Babe, I'm on a road. Yeah. And she understand, like, go do what you got to do. Exactly. So, I mean, bro, it just so, so ladies, to have you that. hear that, ladies? Don't nag the man. Let him go get oh, to the no, paper. Let, let him go get so to the So he can paper. take care of home. Because if not, you're going to go back to work. <laughs> Which you want? <laughs> exactly. Which one you want? You know what I'm saying? I feel it. I, I could feel be it. up here all day, hugged up under you. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, I might. You might have to go back. Yeah. You know what I mean? You might gotta go do something. You might have to go punch that clock. You may yeah. not want to. So we we coming up to the end of the show. We got two more questions left. How did you know that your wife was the one? How did you know that that's this gonna be the one that I? Yeah, married? for me, bro. I mean, I was broke, man. I mean, she didn't make more money than me. I mean, uh, she made more money than me, and she was willing to ride. My wife 
riding in the junk truck with me, mm. sleeping in the middle room of my grandma's house. Mm. Like, yeah, I mean, it's just right mm. now, bro. We was the lose it all guy. We back in the trenches. She ride. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know I'm what I mean? It. So that's the hundred percent ride. Right. And I mean, right now, what, what we got to do? Exactly. I like it. So that was one reason. And um, the other thing is. How did I know she was for me, you said? Mm -hmm. She trusts the vision, bro. She never, she has never questioned nothing I've done, ever. Mm. You sure it's going to work? Like, she could might say it's sure, but it was never, don't do it. I don't trust this. I'm afraid, let's not. It has never, ever, I've never heard that from her. Mm. It was always, I trust you. And you need somebody that trusts you enough that even if we fell, what what we got to do to fix this thing? Exactly. So those are two things that that's you know, amazing. I'm locked in with that. Shout out to wifey, man. Yeah, that, that's 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 dope. But yeah. you gotta have a great woman in your life. Yeah, I'm missing that. Yeah, it's on the way. I I I, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I ain't gonna get to talk about yeah. me. All right. So, for any advice for people that want to follow in your footsteps. Yeah. Uh, but matter of fact, before you give me the advice, what books would you recommend that? people listen to or read on audio book man so i got I know you just dropped like five of seven them habits ago. of highly affected people it's yes. old but it's a classic i read that one uh think and grow rich you can't go wrong with can't it. getting wrong. your mind right Napo- the anything napoleon, napoleon Hill. Hill, right yeah the secret can mm-hmm. go wrong with it yes uh one of my favorite videos you should watch is called personal development by jim Rohn. it's two hours jim Rohn is in like man. 23 minutes That's yes a, i like the way he talk he got oh, great yeah, personality yeah. too jim Rohn. if you think risky if you think taking the risk is tr- wait if you <laughs> think <laughs> if you think uh god if, if you taking think, a risk is risky no wait, wait till you get the bill for not trying yes something like that 100 yeah, yeah. percent. so jim and, and life is all risk so yeah. why not try one. yeah exactly so Jim Rohn, uh, I never read his books. I just watched it to his videos. Videos, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Think and Grow Rich, Who Moved My Cheese. It's about change. So it's great for somebody working, mm-hmm. been doing the same thing for years. It makes you want to change. Yep. Um, and I think that's a play-by-play to get you really get get set a, a set you up. Power the subconscious Powers. mind. And A Better Way to Live by Og Mandino. I would recommend those six, seven books. That's going to get somebody where they need to be, dog. Nice. Y'all heard it. Yeah. I'm going to add uh, Outwitting the Devil mm, by Napoleon, Napoleon Hill. Hill. Mm-hmm. The Game of Life mm-hmm. is a great one. And also The Master Key System on mm-hmm. audiobook. You, you, Ooh, you, I don't know if you kept no, by Charles Hanna. Okay. No, it's, it's 24 parts. Uh, I mean, that, that opened up my, uh, uh, my so eyes you're really lot. on this stuff. Yeah, you man. I've been it, on it. And that's it's the game. That's how, I mean, we're this really computers. Stuff. We're computers. You got to die download information in order to be successful how are you going to know the blueprint and to get to success only difference between all of us is what i learned a long time ago when i first moved to atlanta i seen beamers and benzes mm-hmm. everywhere where mm-hmm. i come from you barely see that right so i'm seeing them everywhere i'm like how the hell all these people got these damn bmws yeah, yeah, yeah. and benzes you know i wasn't even looking at the super exotic but i'm like how the hell what's the difference between them and, and me and then i realized the only difference between all of us is our mentality and our mm. actions. Mm. So Talk all you got to do is learn the right stuff and apply it in your life and you will reap the benefits. 1000%. So bro. listen to the audiobooks, listen to the podcast, I ain't gonna, I, podcast this podcast. I don't really get into podcasts, but I know yeah. this one is going to be gonna very be influential. Yeah. But listen, read the books, listen to the old school books, the audiobooks. I mean, and it's going to excel you. 1000%. Other than that, Neo Anything that you want to give back to the kids, or, or for someone that's want to mimic you and be like you, yeah. what would you recommend? How, yeah. What what advice would you? I mean, give if them? somebody looking, man, first I recommend commit first, figure out the rest later. Like you have to get good at just once you make up your mind, you're going to do something, go do it. Mm-hmm. And my thing that separates me, and I believe you, uh, I know you had that we execute. Yes. When people give us plays, we go run them. Like yeah. so many people, not where they need to be, because you're in your head. Yes. What if it? What if it? What if it don't work? What if it do? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So just take this season as this is for me. Work like I'm in locking season for me. Mm-hmm. Meaning somebody who got his dream house, dream car, family. I'm going back in the trenches and yes, I'm sir. locked in on my goals and my dreams and elevating. So 100%. everybody needs to just go do the same exact thing. I feel it. Lock in, baby. Yep. Well, this been this has been another episode of Maybach Conversations. My brother, I appreciate you gracing us with your me, knowledge bro. and Thank advice. You so much, bro. I hope Inspired. you guys learned a lot. 
Yep. We'll see you again on the next episode. We oh wait wait how how can the people reach out to you if they need to uh, for oh for the house for mentorship? Yeah, check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is at neo deviso n e o d a v i s o. Um, the house is Buckhead Modern Estates on Instagram, and just check my YouTube Nehemiah Davis. All free game and those who want to work with us on a personal level, mm -hmm. mastermind with neo.com. Mm. Appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Over and out.